Father, we magnify you once again today. Thank you for being God and for being who you are to us. And as a matter of fact, we thank you for everything you have been doing. All your intentional acts towards us as people undeserving of your mercy and your grace. But because that is who you are, you have been faithful still. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. And we commit our week into your hand, Father, that even as you send forth your word to us, pray that your word will liberate us. Your word will set us free and set our path on the right direction this week. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, this is still the month of mercy and we're looking at absolutely one of the last charges in this series of word for the week and particularly looking at mercy in the book of lamentation chapter 3 and verse 22 to 23 the bible says that the steadfast love of the lord never sees it his mercies never come to an end they are new every morning great is thy faithfulness O lord towards us now i want you to understand that the mercies of god is steadfast it never ceases it never comes to an end they are new every morning and so god has a provision for you this week every second every minute that at every point in your life you will obtain new mercy now understand that the bible also says that god is rich in mercy and that's who he is it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter what circumstances surrounds your life his mercies are ever new and god is faithful and rich in mercy is able to do that which he has said concerning you now i want you to understand that god does not show us mercy because he's weak or because it's an accident but god shows us mercy because that is his utter intentionality and strength the strength of god is mercy it's an intentional act of god towards us for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So it is an intentional act that was driven by the love for mankind and we see that love expressed as a form of compassion. Now, there are three people um, in the Bible that I want to quickly look at today. And why am I doing this? Because I want you to understand that it doesn't matter what you have done or what you have been through, the personality of God is mercy and God can still be merciful unto you. Now, I, I look at the life of King um, David as a first person. In the book of Psalm 51, um, David was talking about God having mercy upon him according to his loving kindness. God creating a new heart within me and renewing the right spirit within me. Oh, and, 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 and this started from the book of Psalm second Samuel when David had committed the atrocity that he committed and not by the law of the land David deserved to die now everyone I'm going to be showing you today there were people who offenses deserves death and that's what mercy does you see mercy doesn't actually give you what you deserve that's what I'm talking about mercy actually gives you the opposite now David deserves to die but you know what? Mercy says no. It's not going to die. Now from the book of 2 Samuel chapter 24 and, uh, <clears throat> and verse 11. And for when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet God. David see us saying, Go and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So God came to David and told him and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land? Or wilt thou flee three months before thine enemies, while they pursue thee? Or that there be three days pestilence in the land? Now advise, and see what answer 
I shall return to him that sent me. And David said unto God, I am in great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great, and let me not fall into the hand of a man. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from then even to Bathsheba, 70,000 men. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Arunua, the Jebusite. And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Let thy hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. Can you see? Now, you, you see, God is not partial. But there is something that struck my attention in this scripture. Now, David has committed something that is worthy of death penalty and now he prayed for mercy but can you imagine that God gave him three options and out of the three options there was no death penalty and as a matter of fact I was wondering David had done something wrong but God's hand was upon the whole nation and nothing was directly in relation to David here no death penalty that is mercy for you. David was God's own choice. Now, can I also point this to you? That we cannot continue in sin and say grace shall abound. Indeed, the Lord dealt with the land, but not forever. Mercy was in place. Mercy was in place. And David said, it is better for me to fall into the hands of God than to fall in the hands of men. Because if he had fallen into the hands of man, that would have been the end of him. Mercy came forth for him and in place of death sentence, God will tell the destruction. I'm praying for you this week at every point where you have been sentenced to death, at every point where your offenses or what you have done is deserving of a capital punishment. I don't care what it may be, but the voice of mercy is speaking for you in the name of Jesus. The intentional act of God, which is mercy, is speaking for you. Now I see another man here called Paul. And this Paul, in the book of Acts chapter 7 and verse, 50, uh, uh, verse 59, you will discover when, 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 uh, 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 when Paul and Saul was there giving approval of the death of Stephen. Look at it. The Bible says, why do we stoning him? Stephen prayed, Lord, Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knee and cried, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And you know what? Saul was there. Why they were stoning Stephen? Saul approved of his death. Why they were stoning Stephen? And in the book of Acts chapter 9 verse 5, And when he was on his mission to kill more people, the Lord encountered him. And in place of death sentence, God encountered him and made him an instrument. Somebody who was a killer became an instrument in the hands of God. And that's what mercy can do. I'm praying for you here today that whatsoever you have done that is worthy of death, the mercy of God is standing in for you today in the name of Jesus. In every area of your life, in every aspect of your life, mercy is speaking for you in Jesus' name. And finally, there is something that is amazing about mercy and that is the life about the life of the adulterous woman. In the book of John, in the book of John chapter 8 and verse 6 to 8, and Jesus stood down and wrote in the dust with his finger, but let the one who has never seen throw the first stone. <laughs> and you know what? And if you read further, verse 10 and 11, and why Jesus, where are your accusers? Jesus lifted up his head and asked the woman, Oh, woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, Neither do I. <laughs> that is mercy speaking. Neither do I. Go and sin no more. Mercy is forgiving and compassionate. When mercy is at work in your life, your accusers cannot be traced. 
your accusers cannot be found. And the amazing thing about mercy is mercy never accuses, but mercy shows love, mercy shows compassion, mercy washes, mercy saves, mercy, 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 mercy purifies, mercy gives you strength and grace to live a righteous life. I pray for you today by that same message of God, every of your accuser today, you will find them and see them no more in the name of Jesus. In the remaining days in the month of November, I activate the voice of mercy to speak for you. Every voice of your accuser, I silence them in the name of Jesus. In every sphere, in every area of your life where you have been accused, in every area of your life where the devil, the accuser have been accusing you, I decree your freedom by the mercies of God in the name of Jesus. And every door you open this week, I decree them open for you in the precious name of Jesus. Anyone listening to me in the course of this week upon any seat bed, as you tap into this word, I speak forth the healing power of God into your bodies in the name of Jesus. Those of you going for contract, I pray for merited favor and breakthroughs for you. Those of you looking for job, I pray for jobs in the name of Jesus. Those of you trusting God for a life partner, I decree life partners for you this week and connections in all aspects of your life in the name of Jesus. And I also pray for the continent of Africa that the mercy of God will stand in God for that continent in the name of Jesus. And God will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to invite you to Jesus. If you have been living a life that is not worthy of rapture or being rapturable, that simply shows you've been outside Christ. The best thing you can do is to subscribe to the grace of God and the mercy of God that is able to change your life and to turn things around for you. If you want to give your life to Jesus, just surrender and say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. Be my Lord and personal Savior. I bless your week in the name of the Father, in Jesus' name. Stay rapturable. The Lord bless you and have a good week.